Okay, welcome to the next video in the systems programming video series. In this, we are continuing with assignment five, moving on to part four, glitch. Uh, glitch art is the practice of leveraging technological errors for artistic purposes. Some cool examples can be found here. Here's an example, I guess. First implement a new function, write PPM defined in read PPM. Similarly to assignment four, you, you should change the definition of write if you use a different uh, type, which I did not. Then write the program glitch that reads a PPM file, glitches it. Your program should save the modified PPM with a new suffix glitch. For example, if you load in the Mona Lisa file, you should produce that Mona Lisa glitch file. Uh, running gives a command line argument. You uh, print this stuff out, it writes to the file, and then you can write, it's going to generate a PPM image, but you can view it using like GIMP or something like that. The uh, the video or uh, image editing software, which I think I have, right? I should have GIMP, right? Yeah, I have uh, GIMP. So once I'm done with this, I ought to be able to just open the PPM file that results and see the rendering. So, okay. Requirements hints. Implement a function as a binary file. So we're going to use WB to write uh, the file. Use fwrite. Save the results here to start the implementation. Implement a minimal glitch, which uh, shifts each color value by either one or two bits chosen at random. And so here's how they take this and shift it by one or two bits, except that I think this actually has a bug in it. Uh, so not to be too pedantic, but uh, rand mod two is either uh, zero or one with roughly almost equal probability. And so, and so this is not shifting by one or two bits, it is shifting by zero or one bits. So, if, you know, the, the fix is very simple. You just uh, take exactly this and add one, and then it'll shift randomly by one or two. Okay, and it says your result should look like, and I guess maybe it looks like kind of that, I guess. Submit your glitched images. Okay, cool. So, uh, okay, so there's the description of the right, you know, part of this assignment. So let's get, uh, right, that's the, oh, and feel free to get creative, sure. Uh, let's come back over to here. We just finished implementing read, and it seemed to work. So now we're going to implement write. I've already commented that out. Talk through the intro to this part of the assignment. Then maybe we'll just open the file, write the first thing, and then pick up the rest on the next video. So. File star fp equals f open. I take it most of this is sensible. I don't need to explain it. Um, if you've seen the earlier videos, then it should be fairly obvious what I'm doing. If not, fp. Uh, oh, and I'm just going to uh, return null. I think at this point, in order to write the file format, which I think, you know, like when you read the result, like with GIMP, it needs that header info. Uh, oops. Yeah, sorry. I'm forgetting. Well, this should be where I uh, read in. So, oops. This should be just getting the matrix. So, let's say that struct. So, should I... Okay, now I'm realizing. Should I edit the file name here or in the main method? Not that I think it matters a ton, but I feel like maybe this I should just... Yeah, I should I should do what I was doing. And yeah, simply write with a given file name. And then what I'm going to write is going to be right. So, I, so everything I was doing was correct. And then I simply say f write p6 line break. And that's going to write to fp. Oh, right. But I, yeah, I'm forgetting all the things that f write requires, which is uh, how much. Yeah, so what am I writing? I'm writing char, things of size char, because everything inside of this is a char. So size of char, and I'm writing three of them. So I think that should do it. And then once I'm done writing, I should, I'm going to uh, test it soon. So let's F close the uh, FP, null the pointer, and uh, return nothing. So I think that should work. Now, if we come over to, I guess this should be the um, the main file, and therefore I don't think I want to do this at all anymore because all that does is print it out. 
which I don't, I no longer want, I think. So I, I mean, who cares, right? I'm doing this on my own. So uh, anyway, so now if I make a call to write, I should say, and I need to use stircat because I want to take the file name. Ooh, I do want to check. Why did I not check before that the number of arguments was correct? So I should say uh, if, or not that this again really, really matters, but this feels like something I ought to do. So if argc is not equal to two, because we need a command line argument. Oh, maybe I didn't do it because I was only doing the um, the read part where that was like seemed like it was supposed to be hard coded. So anyway, let's say if the this is not two, then print f usage, and then for every argument, print it. RV. So there's a fairly thorough handling of uh, what happens when the number of given arguments at the command line is not correct. Anyway, now that I have done that, uh, then we uh, do all of this. Then I want to make a call to write. So I think I merely say write ppm and I give it the file name. Now, uh, what I want for my file name is I need to edit the given file. And, right, and so this should no longer be hard-coded, but instead should be something that is grabbed from the user. So let's do that. So let's say char star, or right, that it's, it's not, we don't prompt, we simply use the given file name argv1. Okay, um, and then I want to uh, make a string which is uh, char star new file equals malloc size of char times eh, what I guess you know two hundred or something like that doesn't doesn't really matter just enough to make sure that I never run out of space and then I want to stir cat or I guess stir copy a uh, new file from uh, argv1 and then I want to stir cat new file with a uh, dash glitch. Ooh, but I guess I need to, ooh, I probably need to stir talk first. So let's say uh, that this actually should be stir talk argv1 split at the decimal, right? Because I don't want it to say ppm. I read, you know, what I wanted to say is, you know, like whatever, feep raw. And then I want to say dash, right? So I want to pull off the dot ppm. Now I want to put on the dash glitch and then dot ppm. Uh, okay, so I think that should make the new file name appropriate. Here I'll put new file. This is where my pix map is going to go. Here I need uh, the address of W and the address of H. No, just an inside, so right? I just want W and H. Let's look back at the function that I wrote just to see what, yeah, it doesn't even matter at this point, but it should just be an integer and a, uh, another integer. Okay. Coming back over here, so we have the write command, and I think uh, we should, yeah, at this point, we should just see a file get created that has the appropriate amended file name, and we will write to it just this single line uh, p6 line break. So, okay, now if I make test, oh, and this is uh, right, uh, actually, I should change that because in this, this should never return anything. So um, so if it doesn't find the file, I guess, I don't know, what should it do? Maybe exit one? Does that make sense? Oh, right, stir talk, but it doesn't directly return. Oh, did I just not import? No, I imported string, so it should know all of these functions. Oh, but I'm looking at the wrong file. Maybe I'm over here and I did not bring in string, so I should include. Ah, that did everything. Okay, that looks right. So let's test it. Oh, right. And uh, why would it segmentation fault when I exit? But okay, I guess. Oh, and did I return zero? I did return zero. Okay. Uh, so let's do that again. But let's supply a command line argument of the file name, which should be feep raw.ppm. And feep raw glitch exists now with exactly what it should contain. So there we go, I called that a good enough success for this video.